So my idea is now about half an hour to do the topic TA, a professional approach. I will go quickly through that. In case in the next seminar we do it more enlarged, then we just insert this on the DVD also for this seminar. Uh, and then I will ask you for 10 minutes um, to think about in, in what words you would characterize the professional culture I'm standing for, or you, you encountered, encountering, encountering me. When I'm, as I told you, uh, asked at home what you really saw, I say it's professional culture. And the methods and the approaches and the thinking and all this are elements of professional culture. Unfortunately, somehow it's not, it's difficult to build up an organization for cultures of professions. But mm -hmm. if that would be the time, I would love to have something like that. So, <coughs> something meta to start. There is a, um, anthropologist George Steiner who I've wrote in a book about literature, I guess it was, a difference between two ways, two kinds of definitions. The definition for scientific work are, um, how do you call it? Sharp contour definition, I've um, translated it. This means you define a field, for example, psychotherapy, and you define a field, let's say, coaching. And with sharp contour definitions, you, if you have a situation, you say, is it coaching or psychotherapy? If, it, if it's psychotherapy, it cannot be coaching. And if it's coaching, it cannot be psychotherapy. You have to divide with clear contours uh, the world. And defining means drawing limits. And for some uh, purposes, it's a good way to define reality. But he said, for understanding culture, it's not helpful. For understanding culture, you need another way of uh, un uh, defining. That means uh, making understandable what the core of something is and what are the circles around it. And definitions can overlap. So what can be psychotherapy at the same time can also be coaching. You could, can look at the same event from the perspective of coaching or from the perspective of psychotherapy. And we had a long discussion in TA world whether what psycho uh, people who are not psychotherapists are allowed not to do or to do. They should not work with regression. But then you have a problem. If you do a guided imagery, seven regression. Uh, if you talk about somebody about um, biographical events and say, get in contact with what was there, is that regression or not? You had a lot of problems. And one day we stopped that discussion and said, okay, we, it's, doesn't make sense to find sharp contoured borders of the one or the other. It's more important to understand if it's coaching, what is the main perspective on reality of coaching. And it, and, and it also can include techniques who are in the range of the perspectives of psychotherapy. The difference is if you are not sure how to go on, a psychotherapist has different criteria where to go than a coach has where to go. And these criteria, the core responsibilities of a coach are different than the core responsibilities of a psychotherapist. And as long as they are clear about that, it's okay to do things that are also in the range of the other profession, for example. So it's another way to define fields. And this has also um, consequences for organizations. In many organizations, people are 
totally occupied with making sure that nobody is coming into their field. But not working in the field, because all forces are used to defend the field. And this mentality is also a mental, uh, uh, um, a product of mental training of how to define what's mine. And so people should change this border saving and defining attitude towards reality and saying, okay, that's a field everybody can be there. I know who I am I, not because I'm the only one in that field. I am know who am I because I know from what perspective I contribute to work on that field. And that's a change in how I define myself and I, how I want to find respect from others. What comes to mind for me is I used to work for O2, so mobile phones, telecommunication. And in the last two years, the telecommunications industry has shifted so mm. much. Because before it was mobile phones, broadband, yeah. and now it's TV, media, right. stuff. So they, industry, are already doing this. Yes, yes, yes. That's not a question of uh, how society develops. It's a question whether we, we develop our mind maps yeah. about society. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. So, again, uh, for meta-professionality, that is not um, conventional professionality. You just learned what's about this professional world, and then you do it habitually. At the same time, it's important to have a meta-stance to understand how you develop this way of professionality and to develop it further when the world develops further. We call that meta-professionality. And for that, as I already mentioned here several times, uh, it's important to be aware um, that models and methods are just tools, not reality. And if you look at them as tools, you have questions about what can the tool do? What is the difference that can be made with this tool? And if it doesn't make the difference you need, it's not interesting you use that tool. Not habitually use ego states. When you have an issue where ego explaining in ego states doesn't make any mm -hmm. uh, difference. Uh, can the tool be easy introduced and combined with other tools? And we have such a, a huge diversity of tools that it's important, and in techniques it's the same. If you only produce a machine that is working fine and complicated, but it's not interacting with other machines, there's no chance to bring it really to the market. So, uh, the possibility to work integratedly without doing all these definition connections, but just practically working with this spotlight and this spotlight and this spotlight is an important criterion for a good tool. And the economy, which resources are necessary around using the tool. I, for example, I've worked a lot with psychodrama. It's wonderful, but it uses so much resources that uh, you, uh, you cannot uh, accept that. So many of the issues you can do with uh, psychodrama, you can do much more shorter by just talking. And uh, you have to be responsible for the resources the tool needs. And the question is a tool, a specialist tool only, or it can be, it be handed over uh, to your clients? Is, can it easily be integrated into everyday life? If a tool always affords that you train everybody who is getting in contact to learn how to use it, if, uh, then it's not a good tool. Except it's no other way to, to work with that. But you have to be responsible for that.
from the um, once I stated five major perspectives on TA concepts, I just want to mention them. And these are five major spotlights from which I can, in which slide I can look at, at TA, one, at a specific situation. What is the perspective of personality? Then you focus on experience and behavior as a pattern of personality whatever your concepts are, to describe personality. So it's a specific relationship. You can it's sense the same situation, uh, look at the same situation from the perspective of relationships. So this is experiencing and behavior as a pattern in relationships. You choose a different frame of reference, but you look at the same thing. It's not another section. This is why most of our concepts are personality concepts. When you focus on personality with them, and they are communication concepts when you focus on communication on them, and they are organizational concepts when you focus on organization with the same concept. It's not another field, it's another way to look at it. I guess the perspective of creating reality, I've given a lot of examples around this notion here. So you look at how experience uh, comes from frame of reference or how frame of reference is shaped by experience. So it's not relation to communication, it's not relation to personality, it's a relation of to how to create reality. And the perspective of development sometimes is important. Rosemary one, uh, once asked me, is that also some, uh, is history important? Yes, sometimes. As presence is important and future is important. And if you want to look at the presence in the light of past, then you activate this perspective. And you look at the same behavior, not from the standpoint of how is cre uh, reality created now, but how is this rea reality connected with reality in the past, and how to what reality in the future might this reality might lead. So you have a de developmental perspective, but if you only want to study how reality is recreated right now, it's not interested it's not interesting to activate the perspective of development. It's disturbing because it doesn't make a difference for your question. And as I explained at many points is how a single situation is embedded in a professional culture and not only for, of a group but of a society, of an organization, of the economy of nowadays and sometimes the same behavior, some, somebody feeling a bit depressed, I am not, do not study how in the moment uh, reality is constructed that the person, that depression is a part of this reality, but I focus on how is this, this depression reflecting a professional culture or necessities in the specific markets or uh, or working in Qatar, or whatever. So these are five major ways to look at things, but they are not departments of the world. They are ways to look onto the world. And for supervision and professional Controlling and training of professional controlling. I've developed uh, several models. This is an old one. It's from 1990. It was from that time when we developed the new TA exam modality. That is uh, the TA exam in Europe today. And it was classic that we brought three tapes and we looked at the transactions on the tapes and if you could uh, describe what you do in this transaction, it was enough. That was the main perspective of transactional competence. But we found out that, and then besides that you had some theoretical questions. 
and usually that was it. And uh, we came up with the idea that these are three different ways of looking at competence. Uh, one is application competence in the case in the project, and you can listen to that on the tape. But conceptualization, does somebody know concepts which are relevant for what the person is doing and can tie it into the frames, chosen frames of references, you cannot listen to that on the tape. There's a, there's a different perspective and needs to be, uh, needs different procedures to find out whether a person is good at that or not. And a third component of quality is professional identity. Did this person develop a professional identity <coughs> in his or her application field? And we talked about identity and uh, the necessities to separately develop self-description and self-understanding as a professional, as a part of a culture. And this is not described by transactions on the tape, and it's not described by being able to correctly using the theory of ego states to the tape. It's something different. And this is why you need a different procedure to check this. And the idea is all three components have to be combined in a good way that is good professional work. And this is why I came up with the idea of Toblerone chocolate. Uh, as a supervisor, um, your supervisee offers you a piece of chocolate. And you, mm -hmm. and you have to have fun. Maybe it's, it's, it's tasting good. Then you have to check whether the person knows why it's tasting good. Is it by chance or is it uh, the end of a, a bro, uh, of a process the person is aware of? From a professional, we expect not only do something good, but knowing why. If it's not yet good enough, we have to find out what is, le what, what is missing or on what edge should we add something or correct something that the chocolate will be better. So using that example to develop an idea for the supervisor in what, uh, with what ingredients to work better in order to make the result better. And sometimes it's, it is more training in perception of transactions. Sometimes it's, it is more um, adopting appropriate concepts and theories to describe what I did and sometimes it's more being aware of what what I do in this way is different or is in the at the edge of my sender responsibility as an ed educational person. All, all three tapes are kind of psychotherapeutic tapes. It's okay it, this even may be okay if the person is aware of that's not the main responsibility for me to do that kind of work, but I do not have other tapes. That's a good point. If the person even is not aware of that, then there is a problem with uh, self-reflection of professional identity as an educational person. And then we have to work on that. And this... <coughs> and the... Uh, Toblerone models should help to find out what kind of supervision will we do now and what, on what edges to work more and how to combine uh, the things that they fit together. I'm very happy to see this bring bars of Toblerone to supervision. <laughs> 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 Also, you certainly know how, how to produce excellent chocolate. You could uh, produce a chocolate that is not so good and, f and yeah. check her whether she finds out what's missing. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to say something about the developments of uh, uh, professional competence we expect today. 
When I was trained in TA, it was totally focused on can you identify ego states? Do you categorize emotions right? Do you have hints how this could be script behavior? Could you draw a script matrix and describe with the script matrix what you assume what is happening here and why you are saying this or that? And this was it. We seldom had a, ca a, a, a case, so when you had two years of psychotherapy, did you have an understanding what the life situation of the, is of that person, how the process went during these two years? Um, and not at all a part of our professional training where do you know how to present yourself to the public as a psychotherapist? How you organize your practice, how you deal with money, how you are a good member of an association, how you do marketing, what standards, uh, how, how do you catch up with the developments in society. These haven't been perspective of de defining professionality 30 years ago. But today we have much, much more challenges as we had at that time. And I wrote down some things, what a successful professional today needs is this professional competence, certainly, but also field competence. When you want to be successful in the organizational field, it's not enough to be a good transactional analyst in terms of dealing fine with people. You need competence for the market. You, you must understand how the market works. It's not enough to understand how TA association works. You need today, you need networking competence because the companies not only buy a single coach, sometimes they do, but for everything that is more important, they want to buy networks. And you, it's important to uh, it, uh, develop ideas with whom and how and in what structures you could network to offer your client a more complex service. And you even have to do it internationally because the big companies are very reluctant, for example, to buy coaching if it's not or coaching or um, leadership training if it cannot be rolled out internationally. And this is why they only buy services of the big companies, but they are often very superficial and very standard. So you have to learn to connect with others without building a big company to answer the needs of the market. And this is part of your professional competence, certainly. Then it's transparency and originality. Somehow you must make sure how you are original and you make transparent how you work. So you must much more be aware of how you are original and how you can show it to others that they understand. To customers, but also to colleagues, to work together with them. It's not enough to work with a friend. It's important together uh, offer a better service. You need to be very sensitive and at the same time robust. robust. Yeah. Well, we have often people are robust, but not very much sensitive, or they are very sensitive, but collapse when it's getting hard. So today, if you want to do the big jobs, you need to have both. And 30 years ago, we never would have the idea to talk about that in professional training. You need a cosmopolitan attitude and still still be down to earth. So combine things that in the, at the first glance are really far away from each other. And we, we need to integrate much more things into one integrated personality than we did 30 years ago. Maybe not in practice, I believe, but I also believe in practice, but mainly in understanding what we are doing, what professionality is. <coughs> yeah, and you need a culture competence. So, 
and for that you need a meta perspective. That's why I think you need a systemic approach. And we have developed some kinds of tools to think about these combinations. And one is the controlling triangle. So uh, this uh, is describing that the question, who is your client system? Who are the, the people or the, uh, you have to work with cannot be defined separately is related to what kind of problem do you want to solve. So the problem definition is important. The selective view on reality, and if you have, if you define this view on reality, then you can decide, and whom do you have to have in your work. Uh, if, if there is a conflict between two people, and you decide the problem is that there are different personality types, and um, if they find ways to accept the difference and deal with that, that's a problem definition for what you only need to two people. Yeah, they are the two are your clients, and your which uh, are the roles they are in. It's okay to take the professional roles in which they get this problem. If you state the same problem is they have problem with each other because they have bosses who have a conflict with each other, then you state it in a way uh, which helps, which uh, gives the idea it's not enough to have these two people, and uh, it should be necessary to have the two bosses, or even only the two bosses. So when you change the definition of problem, you come to a different conclusion who your client is and and what is the environment you need to know about but you do not need to invite into the process and this changes with changing of problem definitions or when you only have access to specific clients then you can only choose a specific range of problem definitions if you only have <coughs> employees then you cannot choose that it's a strategy problem uh, on the top level because uh, you, you, this problem definition doesn't make a difference when you only have the possibility to work with two employees. Then you have to change your problem definition. How can they, they clarify what can be clarified and cope with what comes out? You cannot think about how can we change the strategy of, of the uh, company. Okay, <clears throat> the third uh, angle of the triangle is, and you have to combine that with the uh, adequate professional behavior and the procedures you adopt. When you have a kind of problems that are more organizational, then you choose the individuals from the organizations and the groups you need there. It doesn't fit much together if you do em emotional work. So the methods you adopt could not be adopted habitually because you like to do emotional work. It has to fit to the problem definition and the, the clients you're working with. <clears throat> so I already said to you something about team definition. That's those who share responsibility and this has consequences on teamwork. And you can do a controlling triangle like the controlling triangle we had right now in the same way as a didactic instrument. So, so I stop with this part now. <clears throat> what I did not come back to is what we keep from classical TA and what do we develop beyond. But I guess I've said everything during these two and a half days. It would be a repetition in a more structured way and it's okay for me to skip that. <laughs>